Hello Biotime 50 students, Dr. Crozier here with a quick tutorial on how to take a MyLab and Mastering assignment. Now the assignments are taken in much the same manner as are your weekly quizzes. However, there are some important differences between the weekly quizzes and the unit assignments. As with your weekly quizzes, you simply go to MyLab and Mastering, open MyLab and Mastering, and on your calendar you should see an assignment appear exactly seven days before it's due. In this instance, for this semester, we are not within seven days of the assignment due date, therefore the assignment is unavailable to students. But exactly seven days before it's due, it will appear on your calendar with an orange square, marking it or denoting it as what the software calls a quiz. Nonetheless, it is your first assignment. When you click on the assignment, allow me to first switch to the student view so it looks more comparable to what you will see. You will notice that the assignments are longer. Here, students receive 40 questions compared to the regular 20 questions for quizzes. You may also click on the grading policy to see the differences in the grading. Now, the wording here is not perfectly clear, but I want to point out some major differences. The first major difference is that you only get one try per question. On the quizzes, you have two attempts per question. But this is much more like a midterm exam in the sense that you submit an answer on paper, turn it in, and you do not know whether the answer is correct or incorrect until after it's graded. That is the case for assignments. You have one attempt per question. Now this does not mean that you can only open the question one time. You may open a question, move on to another question without answering the first question. You will not be charged an attempt simply for looking at the question. But once you select an answer and submit that answer, that answer will be your one and only attempt. If it is correct, you will get full grade. If it is incorrect, you will get zero. When the software says that some credit is lost for an incorrect answer, it is just providing me information about how different types of questions are graded. And that is a second major difference. On quizzes, your questions are primarily multiple choice questions. However, on assignments, you may run into a variety of question types. And so for multiple choice and true and false questions, there is only one correct answer. And if you are incorrect, you score zero. For multiple choice answers where you may select more than one correct answer, partial credit is lost if you incorrectly answer some of the choices. Thus, you'll get credit for correct answers, but lose credit for incorrect answers. Getting all the answers correct in a multiple choice answer type of question will give you the full point for that question. For all other question types, mix and match, fill in the blank, diagram type questions, you lose 0.03 for each incorrect answer. You do lose all credit for a question if you run out of answer attempts, i.e. you answer the question once incorrectly, or if you request the answer for a question, you in a sense are forfeiting your option to answer that question. As with quizzes, if you are late in submitting the quiz before the due date, you will lose 25% per day that it is late, up to four days after which the score will be zero. So let's look at an example of a question that you might see on the assignment. Here you can see that this is a matching type of question where you're instructed to drag the items on the left to the appropriate blanks on the right. Now, as with quizzes, you can look at this question and move on to the next question without answering it. You are not penalized for doing so. When you go to choose your answers, you simply drag and drop them into the blank that you think is appropriate. I do want to point out that you can realign an answer choice after putting it in one of these blanks so long as you have not submitted your answer. You can move this multiple times. You can move it back to the original list. You can enter multiple answers and choose to reset. It will ask you, are you sure you want to clear your work? You can say yes. You are not charged attempts for doing this. You are only charged your one attempt when you choose to submit your answer. Again, you can move on to the next question. The next question in this assignment happens to be one that involves a video. So you would simply click on the video to watch it, watch the video, and then answer the questions about the video. Notice that this is a multi-part question with a part A, a part B, a part C, and a part D. In this case, these are simply multiple choice questions about content that is found in the video. 
You would submit your answers, incorrect answers in this case, you would lose 0 0.03 per incorrect answer. If you get all four parts correct, you get your full point for that question. So with assignments, you need to be diligent to get started earlier in the week to give yourself enough time to work through all of the 40 questions, some of which have multiple parts. I recommend as soon as the assignment becomes available on Canvas that you immediately open it and begin to scroll through the various questions to see what you're going to be asked to answer. This brings me to another major difference between assignments and quizzes. The assignment covers the entire unit, which may be three or four chapters depending on the unit. So you need to go back to your textbook and read up and refresh your memory on some of this content, and you need more time to look this up. Please do not leave these until the last minute before they're due, as it may take you more than an hour or two worth of time throughout the week to complete the assignment. In any case, this is how you complete a MyLab and Mastering Assignment and some of the notable differences between MyLab and Mastering Assignments versus weekly quizzes.